Hi, in this Getting Started with Spiral Team video, I want to show you how to create a requirement. In the previous video, we created our Pinecone Tracker app project, and now we want to start populating that with requirements. So here we are on the requirements page. You can see to get here, you go planning and then click on requirements. We have a grid here in the middle of the screen. Currently it's empty because there's no requirements. Above that, we have this banner, and this shows how many requirements we have. And this is also where it tells you what filters you have set, and you can set filters by these drop downs here. And at the top, we have the button toolbar, which lets you do a whole number of actions. The sidebar on the left contains a number of different things for filtering the information, and you can make this wider or narrower using this toggle on the side. You can also, by clicking here, hide it completely get it back by clicking there. So let's hide it because we don't need it right now. And let's click the insert button. Here you can see we have a brand new requirement labeled new requirement. So our first new requirement is going to be uh, can analyze pine cone, can analyze pine cone groups. And this, uh, we don't have a release yet. That's a big feature. On the right, you can see we have three buttons, save and new, save and cancel. Because I want to add a second one straight away, I'm going to click save and new. And you can see this new requirement is added immediately below the last. So actually can analyze pine cone groups is, you know, it's definitely a big area, but let's actually say, uh, let's talk about count pine cones correctly. That's going to be another one. And let's add another requirement as well. And this one is going to be called categorize pine cones by size. So I'm imagining, let's just click save here so we have to. So I'm imagining some kind of uh, AI device that can look at pine cones and count them and also put them into whether they're big, medium, or small, something like that. Now, actually, these two, counting the pine cones and categorizing them, actually all part of correctly analyzing the pine cones. So we're going to select both of them just with that check marks there, and then click this indent button. And now you can see that they've been shifted. Everything before was a feature. Because can analyze pine cone groups now contains requirements, it's changed into a package. And meanwhile, our features, counting the pine cones and categorizing them, they have both stayed as features over here. So that's actually a really cool way of just quickly putting in a whole bunch of requirements and then indenting, outdenting them however you like. So let's take a look at a more complete set of requirements. Here we have the requirements for library information system, the default project that ships with Spiratin to help you get a grip of the system. You can see we have our hierarchical list of requirements over here on the left and you can open and close those by clicking on those little things there so you can get more information. Let's open it again. You can see the different packages, edition management, author management, book management. And while book management, you can see the progress for the task has been 100% done, which is just the sum of all the tasks inside that package. You can see for test coverage, quite a lot of things are still failing and not going so well or haven't been run at all. And that is summarized in this one bar for the package right at the top. So this bar here is a summary of all of these. And you can see as I hover in each one, it gives actual numeric information rather than just the chart. And that's changing as I move my mouse over all these different test coverage progress indicators. And you can also see over here, the filters are actually much more complete. So currently I'm seeing 15 of 35 requirements. If you wanted to edit any of the requirements, you can just select any one of these edit buttons on the side. Click edit here and you can inline edit quick information right now. So we can change this from being critical to actually only being high. And let's put this as a user story and then just click save. And there's more powerful ways of changing lists as well. But here you can see we've changed it from user story right from there. And if you want to change other columns, you can actually show lots of different columns just by clicking them here. So let's add difficulty. And now if I click 
edit again on this one, you'll see that now I can also right in line, edit the difficulty and I'm gonna put this as easy. So depending on what columns you show will actually determine what you can do straight from this screen. You can also edit multiple entries at once. But let's take a look just at the detail section for this single requirement. This loads up the detail page. You can see we now have a different sidebar. It has links to nearby requirements down at the bottom left here. And at the top left has workflow operations. Now you can see the current status of this requirement is developed. And in this default workflow, when something is developed, you can either continue development, mark it as completed or mark as tested. I'm going to now mark it as completed. And you can see when I do so that the title becomes read only and the status has changed to completed. And once I click save here, you'll see successful changes was made. And now the status has been permanently marked as completed. These other tabs show us different information about this requirement. First of all, we can see what has been attached to this requirement. We can see which tests are used to test this requirement, as well as which tasks have fallen out of the requirement to make sure the work gets done. Additionally, you can see if there are any attachments. This one doesn't. You can tell because there's no asterisk by attachments. That means there's actually no, this has no content in this tab. Associations, there are associations. And for associations, these aren't things that are required to get to completion, such as tasks or tests, but they are things you can link together. So maybe this incident fed into defining this requirement and also you can directly link source code maybe to show this is the code that actually meets this requirement. Finally, on the history tab, you can see all the changes that have been made to this requirement. And you can see all the things that I've done to it today, like changing its type and changing its importance. I hope you found this run through of how to add and then edit requirements in Spiratine helpful. Please let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up so we know to continue making videos like this. And if you'd like to stay up to date with the latest hints and tips about Spiratine or other intellectual products, please feel free to subscribe. Thanks for watching.